Today, we're going to be configuring application monitoring for our Producaton app using Scout. In the last video, we configured AWS to ship our logs to LogDNA, but LogDNA is more of a log management tool and not necessarily a performance monitoring analysis tool. Using Scout, we can easily find performance bottlenecks within our app and database layers. Let's dive in. Let's get started by visiting Scout and creating a new account. Once we've set up a new account, it's pretty simple to get going. The first page you're taken to after being logged in is a single task, choose your language. For this, we're going to select Ruby on Rails, which then takes us to this page. Since we're using environment variables, we use that to configure Scout. We'll set two variables, Scout key, our Scout API key, Scout dev trace. This has a small speed badge in our browser and development mode. Clicking the badge reveals a transaction trace. We can use this to confirm Scout is working. After adding Scout APM to our gem file, let's run the app locally to ensure it works. Now, open a browser tab and hit localhost 3000 to drive some traffic and locks. Let's switch back over to Scout now and see what's happened. Well, it doesn't get much easier than that. It's already sent some logs up to the Scout server and it recognized quite a few things about our app already. Now, we're ready to commit these changes and push the new image up to AWS. This time will be a little different than the last time we had to make a change to the code and push a new build because we will be making a change to the task definition. Before, we only needed to kick off a new task being started and remove the old running task. However, for this scenario, we'll need to go to the AWS console and go back to our task definitions. Let's select our task definition which should take us to the test definition details page. Now, let's make sure we select the latest revision and click create new revision. On the next page, we need to scroll down to the container definition section and click on our production container name, which should slide out a model. From here, we need to scroll down and add a new environment variable called scout key and add our key. Once we are finished, we can click update, then scroll to the bottom and click create. We should now be looking at the details page for the new revision of the task definition. Now, we can navigate over to our cluster section from the left menu and choose our Producaton cluster. From here, we need to check the checkbox for our Producaton service and click update. This should take us to this page. Let's select our newest task definition for our service. The newest revision for my task definition is Web App 4. And make sure we select Force New Deployment. After that, we can click next step until we are on the last step. Then we can click update service. Now we can navigate back to our Producaton services details page and wait for the new service to start. Once it's running, we can click on the task, click on its ENI ID and get our new IP address to make some traffic. Once we've hit the service and generated some traffic, let's head back over to Scout and make sure our logs are showing up. It looks like our traffic is showing up. We can even notice some cool features right out of the gate. One of the first things I notice is a little rocket signifying a new deploy. If you hover over the icon, it gives you the short git sha and time that it was deployed. At the bottom, we can see that it's showing the node from which we are gathering traffic and that it's currently reporting traffic. And that we're barely using any of our CPU and only 133 MB of the 512 MB we've allotted to our container. I used Apache Benchmark to send over some concurrent traffic, so towards the end of the graph we can see the throughput, yellow line, spike up to around 4k requests per minute. Also you can see that I've highlighted a portion of the graph, and the metrics below it are showing the metrics for that time frame. From that I can gather that the average response time was 8.2 milliseconds, with a throughput of 345.4 requests per minute. Let's look at a few other screenshots. When you highlight a time frame, this model pops up, allowing you to see controller actions that are taking the longest. Our app is extremely basic at the moment, so it makes sense that device would be the slowest part of our app. However, if we click on the drop down, we can choose largest memory increase. So with a simple click, we can now see what actions are causing us the most memory, which would allow us to easily pinpoint subpart code. Scout enables you to set up alerts, and notification groups for all sorts of scenarios, like throughput is greater than 2000 requests per minute for more than five minutes. 
errors is greater than 5 per minute for more than 5 minutes. Apdex is less than 0.9 for 15 minutes. Scout also enables background job monitoring and database monitoring, which are definitely features that you'd want if you were running a production service. The production app is definitely not doing much, so we can't really begin to see how powerful and useful Scout would be for performance analysis. In this video, we set up Scout for application monitoring and learned how to make a revision to our task definition. We also took a dive into Scout and seeing how well it could work for us, uncovering bottlenecks with our production service.